Hafade Minit Luz and Mininahu, brothers and sisters, distinguished guests, faculty, friends, families, and most especially to the graduating class of 2010 at the University of Guam. I would like to share my warm Hafa day all the way from Korea, Seoul, Korea. Uh, I am Admiral Pete Gumatato, Naval Forces Korea, and I am honored today to uh, be able to address you for a few minutes, although I am not there, and unfortunately, due to circumstances here on the peninsula, uh, I am unable to be there on person. But to the class of 2010, truly my message is to you. First and foremost, I want to say, you did it! That's awesome! And I would like for you to savor the moment. Savor the moment because you have, in your own unique ways, every one of you, from those aspiring to get a bachelor's degree to a master's degree, every one of you had a unique path that got you to where you're at. So please, instead of worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow, savor this moment. Enjoy it. You deserve it. And I would like to ask you one small favor, that you take the moment sometime today to thank those that helped you along this journey. Thank those like your family, your spouse, your, the faculty members that helped you along in some of those long hours in your study periods. Take a moment and think about this because nobody in this journey in life goes it alone. No one. And this is a great accomplishment, but I do know many people are there to celebrate with you. It'll be great for you just to acknowledge what they mean to you. Now, as you're sitting there, you're wondering, oh, that's great that uh, Admiral Pete Gumatalto is talking to us from Korea. In fact, this is a first, by the way, for me. Uh, a, speaking at a commencement ceremony, and B, doing it by video, vice being there in person. So you're probably wondering, you know, so what? Why, why is this so important that I listen to him? Well, as I was talking to uh, the Honorable Robert Underwood the other day, uh, he convinced me to do this because normally I like to engage with an audience when I talk. I wasn't that comfortable talking here to a camera, but he says, Pete, you got to share with these graduates, you know, things that got you to where you're at and celebrate the fact that you are from Guam. And he's absolutely right. The main point I want to express to you in the so what of why I'm talking to you is I am just like you. What do I mean by that? I grew up in Guam. I ate betel nut and papulu. I went out spearfishing in Pago Bay. Yeah, I can come to. I can do a lot of things. Been to fiestas, weddings funerals, gone to profession, uh, processions, attended Father D, did a lot of things that, that are so unique to our beautiful island. And just like me, uh, you can go out there and, and walk through those doors as a result of you getting your degrees. Walk through those doors and, and don't even hesitate because you deserve it. And that's how I look at life, that you say, instead of saying, uh, I cannot, you should say, why not? Why not? And not everybody has keys to every door that is given in life. If anything that you should learn about um, studying at the University of Guam, it should have enriched you in the knowledge of the world. Not just about our island, but about the world. About certain facets of things that would, that would make us say, oh my gosh, I did not even realize that. If anything, it should make you hungry to say, what else is out there? And why not me? Why shouldn't I go out there and get it? Now remember, there's a physiological part in our brain. It's called the amygdala. And the amygdala back in the Stone Age caused the cavemen to run away from saber-toothed tigers, and that's a good thing to generate adrenaline. But nowadays, in the 21st century, the amygdala, which is part of our anxiety and fear in our brain, can sometimes be a sea anchor. It can, it can actually slow us down in our ability to realize our full potential. I say to you, hey, it's okay to, to be afraid to say, can I do it? But don't let that stop you. Don't let that say, hey, uh, I'm not gonna do it because I'm afraid of failing. Why not you? 
And if you fail, you know what? Just get up and do it again. There's a lot of things that I want to share with you, but I'm not going to talk long today. I want to do share several, some key points that I've used in my life that I, that I looked at as anchor points, baseline things that I always fell back on wherever I went. And the first one that I want to share with you is, I think, one of, the, one of the most powerful things that I can in terms of working with people. It's the power of excellence. Excellence. What did Aristotle say about excellence? We are what we repeatedly do. Therefore, excellence is not an act. It is a habit. Why is Aristotle so big on excellence? Well, let me first tell you what excellence is not. Excellence is not about being number one. Excellence is not about competing and doing whatever you can to get to the top. No, as they say in Korea, anio. No. Excellence is all about doing your best, striving to be your best every day. Even if you don't like feel like you're you're doing it, just give it your best. And the best way I can share with you how I view excellence is an anecdote that I want to share with you in my own personal life. Uh, I have two beautiful children, Kailani, uh, a girl obviously, and then I have a son, Peter. Peter is younger and Peter has special needs. He has Down syndrome, trisomy 21. But Peter taught me the true meaning of excellence back in Hawaii when he was participating in a Special Olympics. It was a track and meet field event for the state championship. The winner gets a gold medal. I was so excited for Peter. Peter was in the first tee of a 100-yard dash. He was on the first lane, and his best friend Adam was on the sixth lane. Somehow I was down in the track and field grounds. Don't, don't ask how I got there, but I was down there right next to Peter, just pumping him out about what? About winning. Peter, come on, you got to get this gold medal. Pumping him up because I got it, Dad, I got it. You know, he was all pumped up like a young kid. And the gun sounds, and boom, there goes Peter. Taking off down that lane so fast, in fact, that he was in the lead. But a funny thing happened. Halfway through that 100-yard dash, turns around and he sees Adam, his best friend, lane six. But Adam was last place. He was trying his best. He was last place. You know what Peter did? He ran across... Ran across those six lanes, much to my chagrin. I was actually shocked that he did. He grabbed Adam's hand, and they ran down that track on lane six, and they came in fifth and sixth. They were jumping up and down, and by the time I got to Peter and, and Adam, I was going to tell Peter, what were you doing? What were you thinking? But by the time I got there, I mean, they were just celebrating the fact that they did it. And they were just so proud of that fact. And they did it together. And they were jumping up and down. They were hugging me. And I ended up jumping up and down and hugging them. And I thought it was very foreign at the time. I said, what is going on? And as they were standing there receiving their white ribbons for participation, and as I was looking at that guy in the gold medal standing there, but I was looking at my two uh, good kids jumping up and down, saying, we did it. Look, Dad, we did it. They were so proud. Uh, it brought a tear to my eye. And it was at that moment that I understood what the true meaning of excellence. Excellence is striving to be the best you can be because your actions would, would, I would inevitably bring other people around you to try their hardest as well. There's another term that I want to share with you, and it's called balance. Balance, sometimes people overuse it. You know, got to have balance in life. Some people use it as an excuse just to party on their whole life. Anio. That's no in Korean. Don't do that. Don't just live a carefree life. There's many things in life that make you a whole person, that makes you realize things that you don't know and makes you learn to give back in a lot of the strengths that you have. And when I think about balance, I think about four important areas. First, the balance of taking care of yourself, both mentally and physically. Go out and work out. Go out and take a walk. And, 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 and when you do the... Uh, the mental peace, whatever gives you peace and tranquility. Find ways, spiritually, is a very good example of that, that we were raised back in home. The value of God in the center of our lives gives you so much peace. And then there's another part about balance, and it's work. That's a big chunk of what we do in life. Think about the amount of hours sometimes that you have to spend at work. And then there's the other piece of balance, which is your family and your loved ones. 
spending time with them. And then finally, the community. That, that portion of the, the circle of balance is always overlooked. Community, what does that mean? It means giving back. It means taking your position in the community, in the leadership role, or maybe even an assist role, and making a difference. Daring to go out there and, and hey, be a Cub Scout leader. Hey, go out there and, 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 and do a fun run for, for, for breast cancer research. Do something as contributing and giving back to the community. Vice just thinking about me, me, me. The me, me, me quadrant is the, the physical and mental part, the self piece. If you think about balance, why is it so important? Balance translates to energy. If you have good balance in your life, you will have so much energy to even do more. And then the third piece that I want to share with you that I found so important in my life, particularly as a leader, is the word humility. You don't find that word humility talk about a lot uh, in the leadership books, but I think humility is so fundamental in, in what a leader is all about. When you are put in a position of leadership, which I am so confident that many of you in the class of 2010 uh, will be celebrating, I will tell you that this, that when you're a leader, when you're put in a position of authority, it is not about you. It's not about your title, it's not about how much you may, it's not about your status, it's a responsibility that is given to you, entrusted upon you, to lead others to be the best they can be. And so what better tool can I share with you than the word humility? It's about those around you. It's about you as the leader creating an environment, an inclusive environment, where many of your folks around you say, I feel so relevant. I am such an important member of this great team. And if you ground yourself and you humble yourself, and instead of looking at ways to promote yourself, but look at ways to celebrate the strengths of your people. Oh my gosh, you will grow a million times fold. Just in, in an incredible way, you will become a better person just by default. So in closing, I would like to tell you that um, I am so proud of all of you. Uh, either getting your bachelor's degree or your master's degree, I think that's an incredible accomplishment. The class of 2010, Dare to say, why not? And for, for all of you, you must, you must look at life this way. Do not approach life in this journey that you're going to continue to say, you know, uh, I got to work on my shortfalls. You must focus on your strengths that got you to where you're at. Yes, you have many, many strengths. You have many things that you should celebrate in. And, and I look back in my childhood I look back at the many things that my mom and, and dad taught me, na and ta. I look at what my brothers have taught me growing up together, working together in a ranch in Ta'i, and doing all those things that I've learned, going to church, learning from Father James Gavin, uh, Father Kenise, all the, all the different folks, all the different leaders in the communities, like, like Mayor Sablon in, um, in Sinahanya. All those folks that taught me so many great values about working together as a team, about looking at celebrating and, and appreciating life for what it is, not for what I don't have, but the blessings I have. Use those strengths that, that make Guam such a special place because it is a very nurturing environment that I remember. And I've always anchored upon those great values that I learned growing up. And so I am just like you, except I don't have a beetle nut in my pocket right now. I wish I did, but I want to tell you, I look forward to seeing you all take that next step. And that next step is, is daring to go out there and make a difference, either in Guam or around the world. Go out there and make a difference and make the people of Guam proud. Make your, make your family proud. And more importantly, use the... the the tools of excellence and use that, that tool that gives you energy called balance. And then remember, when you are leading, take all of that in terms of humility and never put your, never take yourself seriously. And if you, if you look at it from that angle, you're going to walk away in life 25 years, 30 years will go by so fast, and all you're going to say is, wow, that was incredible. I can't wait for the next day. So, Sidhu is from Amasik. 
for giving me this opportunity, giving me this opportunity to address you. It is truly an honor that I have, I'm standing here and, and sharing a few words with you. I wish you much success in your future and good health and prosperity. So take care and uh, save some of the Kelly for me when I get back there one day. Adios.